Hi, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Melissa Dickens, and we're joined here by a number of Planning Commission staff and also staff from Hillsborough County and EPC. We really appreciate you all joining us this evening, and um, I am going to turn it over to Bryn Dauphiné in our office for some housekeeping um, to, to get people started. So Bryn, can you go ahead and go through that? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this public meeting about the proposed Hillsborough County Comprehensive Plan Amendment HC CPA 23-18. My name is Bryn Dauphiné with the Planning Commission here to talk about a few housekeeping items. This meeting is being recorded, as I'm sure you have all seen. Um, we will send a follow-up communication with instructions on where to find the recording and related materials soon online. Microsoft Teams has a number of options that allow you to add live captions, change the language of on-screen materials, adjust high contrast vis visibility, and more. You'll just want to navigate to the top of your screen where there are three dots that say more, and you will find all of those options right there. Um, we understand that this is a topic that has a lot of interest, and we thank you so much for taking the time to be here tonight and ask questions. We encourage you to use the chat function for your questions, and we will answer them in the order we receive them after the presentation. Because we have limited time this evening and a great deal of interest in the amendment, we ask that questions and comments be focused on the proposed amendment. We welcome comments on this project and want to make sure we document them and have them all in one place. We ask that in addition to comments this evening, written comments be directed to planner at plancom.org. Again, that is planner at plancom.org. This will help us ensure we capture all your comments, are able to review them as a staff group, and can ensure they be included in the agenda packet that goes to the Planning Commission as well as elected officials. If you have a question or comment about another aspect of the comprehensive plan or another project or development, we may be unable to answer those questions at this time in an effort to focus on the proposed amendment at hand. Such questions can also be directed to planner at plancom.org, and we will do our best to forward your comments or questions to the appropriate team member or outside agency. We are here to listen tonight and look forward to going over the amendment, answering your questions, and hearing the community's feedback. We have several members of the Planning Commission staff, as well as representatives from EPC and the county, to respond to any technical questions. Thank you again for spending the next hour with us. At this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our presenters. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Bryn. Hi, good evening, everyone. Melissa Dickens, Planning Commission staff. And tonight we're gonna be focused on some proposed plan amendments to the One Water chapter. These are water and wastewater policies. Um, again, just wanna echo uh, the thanks for joining us this evening to learn more, and we look forward to talking with you. Uh, Lizzie, if you could skip to the next slide, please. Okay, so I uh, wanted to share a brief overview of what we'll be going over tonight. Uh, first, touch on the, the comprehensive plan generally and the current context within the comprehensive plan. Um, many of you all are familiar with it, but when we wanted to provide a quick refresher, then we'll talk through the comprehensive plan amendment, what is being proposed, what is being proposed to change, what is uh, simply being reorganized and shifted that's current policy today. Uh, we'll have a brief overview by development services staff of the corresponding land development code change, and then we will have plenty of time at the end for questions. So as Bryn mentioned, if you think of a question and you want to ask it, the best place to put it is in the chat. Next slide, please. Um, so first and foremost, what is a comprehensive plan? Again, many of you all, this will be a refresher, but wanted to set the stage for the document that we're talking about this evening. A comprehensive plan is a long range policy document. It's something that is required under state law for every local government in Florida. It sets the, uh, the long term horizon policy direction for each jurisdiction. So the, the plan that we're talking about tonight is the comprehensive comprehensive plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County. Uh, this document is put together and updated and maintained 
by the Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission or the Planning Commission staff. Uh, it is then approved by the Board of County Commissioners. So any changes to the plan uh, go through not only the Planning Commission as an advisory body, but also to the uh, Hillsborough County Board of County Commissioners. The plan is developed to provide high level direction, kind of 35,000 foot direction on a variety of different topics. We're talking primarily about water and wastewater this evening, um, but there are a number of other goals, objectives, and policies throughout the comprehensive plan that address things like land use, uh, environmental uh, considerations, mobility, solid waste, capital projects, pretty much anything that a local government has jurisdiction over, there is a comprehensive plan policy for. Um, and the uh, a number of different items have to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. In addition to private development, also the uh, zoning. So um, the, the next level down that kind of regulates uh, what a particular dimension of a site look like, the land development code, and the capital improvements program have to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, and the, uh, the policies that you all are probably interested in this evening, the septic and utility connection policies, those are primarily in the one water chapter of the comprehensive plan. So there are different sections within the comprehensive plan and the language on water and wastewater, utility connection provisions, those are all within our one water chapter. They were formerly in the future land use section, so I wanted to say that to make sure that people know that they moved as of 2020 into our one water chapter. Next slide, please. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the urban service area and the rural area. Um, this uh, adopted future land use map that's on your screen, there is a, a distinct blue line that runs uh, along uh, along the edge of the, that is the urban service area. And the urban service area within the, the blue line is the area where we anticipate more homes, more businesses, shopping, jobs, and also where public services uh, like uh, water and wastewater are available. Um, our rural area or the area outside the blue line on, on the screen um, is uh, uh, primarily agricultural uses, uh, large lot rural residential development, um, other more rural uh, uses that are more rural in nature. And these typically are on well and septic, aside from a few exceptions, and we'll be talking about those exceptions this evening. Um, one important thing to note, the future land use map categories, uh, so the, the kind of darker yellow, the, the purple, the, the red that you see, those are the higher density future land use categories within the urban service area. And there's lower density categories outside the urban service area in the rural area. So it's really the, um, the future land use that sets the development potential of the parcel, sets the density and intensity uh, that one can develop. Um, and then again, our utility policies related to water and wastewater are in the one water chapter. Next slide, please. So wanted to first touch on the current context. What does the comprehensive plan say today about utilities and the rural area? Um, under One Water Objective 4.3, that's where the language is today adopted into the comprehensive plan. Uh, it, it outlines uh, the exceptions when water and wastewater would be allowed in the rural area. So those include uh, some of the land uses that are planned villages, if a property has established vested rights, if it was established prior to uh, an urban service area or a comprehensive plan, if there is a, a, a documented public health hazard, such as someone's well uh, going bad, there's a public school, and then properties that meet really a number of criteria within the wellhead resource protection area or Tampa Bay water well field mitigation area. So that's when a line can be extended to meet those purposes. Uh, the comprehensive plan today allows connections to existing lines. So if a line is, for example, uh, run for um, a, a public health hazard or uh, um, uh, 
something that has vested rights, properties that can be any of those exceptions, properties that are immediately adjacent to the line can connect. So they, they can connect and essentially uh, it's more in the land development code, but they are allowed one single service connection. And uh, one thing that is important to note, those of you that um, have been working in the space for a long time, this section has really been updated and um, added to over time. Uh, there have been a number, uh, or the, there's been um, a number of public and private changes to it, and there's really a need for a revised structure for clarity. Um, so that's one of the big things that we'll be talking about this evening is we wanted to make it clearer, easier to understand, and easier to tell where things apply, what applies to everything, what applies in certain situations. So you'll see that reorganization uh, in the updated language. Next slide, please. Okay, so I uh, wanted to touch on the, the purpose and intent of this plan amendment. Uh, there are a few different purposes of this plan amendment. The first one is addressing adverse impacts of septic tanks. When we were working to develop the One Water chapter back in 2020, um, it was brought to our attention that sometimes concentrations of septic tanks can cause concerns. There may be a need to further explore how to address septic tanks. That's covered under One Water Policy 5.2.8, and that directs staff to work with the appropriate regulatory agencies on this to look at opportunities for limited wastewater, uh, changes to wastewater policy, um, and to try to find different ways to address septic. So that's uh, the policy provision within the plan that we're working with today. Um, and uh, we are handling that through a, a couple of different mechanisms that I'll talk through, um, but overall the goal is to address adverse impacts of septic tanks. Uh, secondly, uh, we recognize that there occasionally is a need to respond to unique circumstances in the public interest and uh, create more predictability. So occasionally something will come through that, like a library or a park and a line is need to be run. We wanted to create something that um, that was predictable and uh, had certain criteria for this. Uh, we've also, as I mentioned, reorganized and restructured this section for clarity. I want to be clear that uh, we are retaining the existing components of the comprehensive plan um, and the changes would be countywide. There is no removal of specific protections for certain areas, no changes that apply only to one area and not another. Um, this is intended to be for the, the rural area in its entirety. And uh, I want to thank our partners on this. The, we've been working on the policy changes planning commission with support from EPC in Hillsborough County. So just want to recognize the folks that have provided some really good technical feedback. Next slide, please. OK, so I want to spend a little bit of time on this slide uh, going through the substantive changes. So the first item is 4.3.3A4, and that is all about um, allowing a utility extension to occur if there is a documented environmental issue. So if, if septic or uh, an interim wastewater facility is causing an environmental concern that is documented by a regulatory uh, agency, this is one way that we want to help address any impacts from septic tanks. So there would be the ability for a line to be run. That would be under the extension, uh, extension portion of the comprehensive plan. Uh, the second uh, proposed change is enabling extensions to minimize concentrations of septic tanks in flood prone areas. This is typically where there is the greatest risk of having um, uh, an environmental issue with septic tanks. Uh, there are specific criteria outlined uh, for what would constitute the ability to extend this line, distance from the urban service area, density, size, um, all sorts of things. So I encourage you to, to take a look at that policy and the criteria. Um, the next policy, 4.3.4a, uh, this, as I mentioned earlier, the properties that are adjacent to, if my arm is the line, I love to do this, uh, then if there's a property that's adjacent, that property today could have one single service connection. This uh, um, proposed change 
would enable if a property is subdivided to have the parcels within the subdivision served by water and sewer. So it wouldn't just be those parcels that are immediately adjacent to the road, it would be those parcels within the subdivision. A couple of important points to note on that one um, that we have put in language that utility infrastructure should not be oversized or constructed for new development. There is no required uh, or there wouldn't be any allowable, excuse me, no allowable uh, expansions of the existing infrastructure or it should not be designed to serve development beyond the adjacent uh, parent parcel. So what's called the parent parcel, the parcel that exists today, the utility infrastructure should be sized just for that parcel. Uh, the other, another uh, change is again, uh, being able to respond to unique circumstances, providing the ability for the, the Board of County Commissioners to have a process when there is something in the, the public interest. Uh, there are criteria that we have outlined about how uh, that should be considered, and that's under policy 4.3.5. Um, and then we've added some requirements regarding the sizing of lines and no oversizing and uh, also considering capacity and technical feasibility. That's something important to note. Uh, again, the reference is 4.3.2A3. Um, and finally, we have updated policy regarding lot sizes on utilities, uh, excuse me, regarding lot sizes on properties that are adjacent to utilities or served by utilities and compatibility with the surrounding area. So, um, we already have policy in place that states that any extension or connection should not be considered a justification for increases to density or intensity through the future land use map amendment process, uh, that it can't be allowed for a rezoning for something that um, would not ordinarily be allowed in the rural area or considered rural character. And so this, uh, this policy we've just added to speak to lot sizes as well. Next slide, please. And I, I know I am seeing some chats come in. We definitely want to get to your questions. Um, I just wanted to uh, go through the presentation so that everyone could hear the material, and then we will uh, make sure to get to questions. So I do appreciate your patience. Um, HCCPA 2318, the proposed reorganization of the section under this amendment. I wanted to share this so that people could, folks could see uh, how the new section is structured. So before, or what's adopted today, things are kind of a little bit all over the place. It's hard to go back and reference which letter re refers to which. And so we have reorganized this to try to make it clearer, to make it easier for the public to use, make it easier for, for everyone really to understand what the intent is. Um, and uh, I'll briefly go through this. First, we have under 4.3.2, the minimum criteria for all potable water and wastewater extensions or connections in the rural area. So this is if anybody wants to extend or connect, they have to first meet this bare minimum criteria. And this is all about who is responsible for the service. Again, that policy about it not being used as a justification for an increase in density or intensity. Um, the need to meet Hillsborough County technical requirements. Uh, that it can't exceed capacity, sizing of lines, and then that the jurisdiction extending lines is Hillsborough County. So that that any extension or connection has to meet those specific criteria first. Then there's criteria specifically for extension of water and wastewater lines in the rural area. This uh, includes all of the exceptions that are there today and also adds in a couple of ones about septic that I mentioned earlier. Uh, 4.3.4 is the criteria for specifically for connections to existing lines in the rural area. Um, and so that is under its own section. Now that's where you'll see the information about uh, subdivisions. And then 4.3.5 is outlines. This is new. This outlines the criteria for our process for the BOCC to consider exceptions in the public interest. Um, next slide, please. Okay, I think now um, I, I'm going to uh, share the, the screen with Israel. He's going to talk through some of the uh, plans for the corresponding LDC change. 
Good evening, uh, Israel Monsanto Development Services. So there would be a land development code text amendment that is related to the to the um, comprehensive plan changes, and there is that application 24.0221, and it will travel together with the comprehensive plan amendment. Um, generally speaking, section four, uh, section of the land development code. 40202, which is required with determinations for portable water, sanitary, sewer, solid waste, stormwater parks and schools. That section will be amended to reflect the, the changes of the comprehensive plan. The objectives and goals will be basically codified, and that will be the requirements uh, put on the code. So we staff is working on the drafts as this uh, uh, comes along, and we should have a draft uh, ready. Now, Again, the, the same criteria that you will see that Melissa presented will be codified in the land development code language. Thanks so much, Israel. OK. Um, OK, wanted to share where we are in the process. Uh, we have distributed this for preliminary agency comment. Um, so we've sent it out to all of the uh, local and regional entities everything from EPC to the Water Management District to FDOT to get preliminary comments. Uh, the, uh, this is um, scheduled right now to go to the Planning Commission on April 8th at 5.30 p.m. Um, that is a public hearing. The public is welcome to come and speak at that meeting. Um, and then the Board of County Commissioners transmittal hearing is on May 9th. It's at 6 p.m. Um, follow, should the VOCC make the decision to transmit, that will go to uh, formally to state, local, and regional agencies for review. Um, then come if it comes back, um, if there are any objections or things that need to be addressed, that will be done at that time. Um, and the VOCC adoption hearing is scheduled for June 6th. Um, we wanted to make sure to provide a link to the full language in the chat. Um, or excuse me, in the presentation, we'll also put it in the chat, but that's where you can find the latest draft language um, and uh, see other documents related to this plan amendment. And um, I am seeing a, a number of uh, really good comments this evening. We, we welcome and encourage comments. We would request that in addition to the comments this evening, um, that comments are sent to uh, planner at plancom.org. Uh, this will uh, help us out tremendously in terms of making sure that we have all the comments in one place, we have an opportunity to review them as a staff, and then we can make sure that any written comments that we get are provided uh, in the packet for both the planning commissioners and elected officials. Next slide, please. OK, uh, just wanted to provide my contact information again. I've put the, the general planner email here to make sure that um, someone else is getting the emails as well so that um, I make sure to include all of them. Um, but I uh, wanted you to have my contact information if you have any other questions. Um, and I think really this concludes the, the formal presentation part of the evening. Uh, I, I saw a bunch of comments and questions coming in. I know we really want to focus on the questions, but please note that your, your comments are noted and we would appreciate any written comments as well, because there are quite a few. Um, okay, Bryn, can you go ahead and walk me through the, <laughs> the questions that came in? Absolutely. Our first one uh, is from Deanna. Um, Deanna says, I spent a few years on the Keystone Civic Association Board of Directors and have not heard any concerns regarding septum, septic systems in Keystone because of our minimum site size via our community plan. Is there new information on problems with septic systems in Keystone that we should be aware of? Yeah, that's a, a great question. Um, I'm less familiar with the scientific aspects of the, the septic, so I might ask see if uh, either of our agency partners with EPC are on to, to respond to that one. Yeah, Melissa, this is Samuel Robbie with EPC. No, I am not aware of any uh, septic issues in the uh, uh, Keystone area. Okay. All right. 
Our next, next question um, comes from Melissa. Um, why was the policy moved from the flu to its own standalone policy? Um, I, I presume that question is about uh, the um, the water and wastewater policies being moved from the future land use section to the one water section. So when we put together one water back in 2020, uh, we really wanted to have all of the water resources related language in one location. We wanted it to be uh, holistic and integrated and a place kind of a one stop shop where people could go to look at any aspect of water or wastewater policy. So in addition to uh, those extension policies being moved, the potable water, wastewater and stormwater sections were all combined so that everything is in one location. Great, thank you. Our next question comes from Rich and Joyce. Um, what specific proof demonstrates a septic issue with current developments? Well, there would need to be under this provision a documented for for um, to meet the criteria of uh, extension. There would need to be a documented environmental hazard. Um, you know, it could be from uh, from from our friends at EPC, from the Water Management District. There could be a number of different uh, possibilities. So I don't know, Sam, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, well, if the health department could join in and issue a public health hazard or environmental health issue, then that is a consideration. EPC is one agency that could do that. Uh, this, the Department of Environmental Protection, which is now in charge of the issue. So any regulatory agency dealing with septic tank or health related issue can pipe in and document. So it is not the word of a developer coming along and saying, I have a septic tank issue or, or an adverse impact, potential impact issue, and then the county takes it and runs with it. It has to be documented through a governmental agency dealing with the uh, uh, septic tank issues. Thank you very much. Um, our next comments says uh, EPC requested this language to not require anyone to connect to a line if they didn't want to. I'm not sure if we requested that. I don't recall that, but I, I'm not sure if it's the law of the land. You can't make people connect to a line if they don't want to. You can't make people convert unless there is a public health hazard or some issue, but uh, it's a voluntary program so far. Thank you. Um, I'm just reading through our comments, some great comments in here. Um, I'll go ahead and read off a few of these. Um, we have a comment that um, Uh, public interest should be defined. Anything, almost anything can be used as a justification for public interest. Um, Thank you. Um, I apologize, they're, they're coming in. Um, what about the 65,000 homes already in the service area that are not connected to public services? I'm not sure which project that is specifically. Um, if you want to follow up with an email with more specifics, I can definitely um, try to get you an answer, but I'm not sure which, which project that is. But I appreciate okay. the question. Do any of these changes override the Keystone Community Plan? Uh, no. The Keystone Community Plan is remaining intact. We're not proposing any changes to the Keystone Community Plan. Um, so that that is something that our land use planners are a little more familiar with, but um, this is separate from that. And how many areas have already been found that need addressed? How many areas are having uh, environmental issues with septic? I presume, Sam, would you be able to chime in if, on that? Really in the past, uh... I know a couple of decades, they come and go as a small entities, individual entities. And this, remember, septic tanks is not a problem. I, I hope this is not uh, 
something that may give septic tanks a bad name. One third of the state of Florida is served by septic tanks. Nearly 2.7 million septic tanks are in the state of Florida, which constitutes about 12% of the septic tanks nationwide. In Hillsborough County alone, we have over 120, 125,000 septic tanks. Septic tanks are a good thing that are needed, are essential. Simply, we cannot sewer and extend lines, utility lines throughout the entire county. It's neither feasible nor practical nor warranted, uh, frankly. But septic tanks, if they are sited properly, designed, constructed properly, and more importantly, if they are maintained properly, they are a good thing. The thing in, in the state of Florida, Florida is a low-lying state where groundwater table uh, is fairly high. So we don't have a whole lot of clearance in most areas, especially in coastal zones. That's where the problem is. Septic tanks cluster in coastal zones, close to waters. If they are not maintained properly, they tend to leak. Leaking, typically they feed nutrients, which feeds algae blooms. And we have a problem statewide in that every uh, uh, summer or they also leak uh, contaminants like bacteria. Uh, the state of Florida provides 90% of its potable water, drinking water to the residents of the state from groundwaters. To the extent the state can and locals can protect groundwaters, that is the focus. My understanding, this, this new uh, one water here modification the objective is still to limit, you know, the public water lines and wastewater lines uh, in rural areas. That is still the objective. The exception is within close proximity to the service area of the rural uh, of the uh, uh, of the county. If there is a an entity that has an issue with septic tanks, a uh, public health issue. I mean, there are very few and far between. There's, there's not many, but this is here to address it if they do come across. I recall Coronet Industry with the residents around there outside the service area. Uh, they were pro provided by portable water by the state for an extended period of time simply because contamination of the ground. If there is a leaky gas station with some people around with wells, not just uh, septic tanks, septic and wells, it becomes an issue. So those are few and far between. It has to be documented. It has to be uh, proven before things can be considered. So nobody is asking, not in here, that utility lines be extended way into the surface area. Fewer close by the existing lines or within a reasonable amount of, amount of distance. And there is a warranted request that can be proven then on a limited basis, a utility line may be extended if there is an infrastructure by the county, if there is capacity, and if it's for a limited purpose. So th there is, it is not that ubiquitous around the county that this thing exists, but it does exist. Remember the this ruling, this update applies to the entire county. It applies all the way to the South County areas, which we have a lot of rural areas, pristine areas, to Eastern County, uh, Dover, Safner, Eastern Hillsborough County, closer to uh, Plant City, Riverview, uh, Waimama, Apollo Beach. There are areas outside the urban service areas, in which case some of these uh, new regulations could be warranted on a limited basis. So I understand, um, Keystone is exempt. Keystone has its own uh, criteria like Melissa had mentioned, but this is not, there is like impending issue and we're trying to address today. I can't point my finger to a certain area that is waiting in line for this, but there could be a benefit to it if you are in very close proximity to existing county lines. Yeah, and I, you know, just want to build on that, you know, um, we want this is something that we've had in our plan for a while to try to be proactive about these things so you know we want to have the policy in place if something would occur 
Um, that that's very important that there is the ability if there is a documented environmental issue to be able to have the feasibility to address that. So, um, you know, that's something that that is important to make sure that we're taking care of. All right, our next question is um, if no septic tank issues, why is Taylor Morrison being allowed to bring in utilities to increase density? Why were there changes in policy updated? Why were these changes in policy updated during the pandemic when no public meetings were conducted? So I can't speak to the first one because I um, am not familiar with that project. Again, if someone wants to send that to me in an email, I'm happy to try to get the appropriate folks to answer it. Um, but with respect to the changes, uh, they were we had a number of public meetings, uh, you know, granted, Everyone was virtual during the pandemic, but a number of public meetings were held. It was sent um, out to all of our, our county stakeholders. Um, you know, we certainly want to try to maximize the, the participation. We actually found during the pandemic that we had a higher participation because of virtual meetings. Um, but it, you're correct. It was during 2020, but we did have virtual meetings. So I just want to clarify that. Um, has traffic, has the traffic impact been studied? Is there an expansion plan? I think that may have, um, uh, that may be a question that we would send to the planner at plancom.org with some more um, context and some uh, further detail on that question. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Um, this proposed amendment goes against comp plans for Keystone, unincorporated Lutz and Balm Riverview. Why initiate a proposed amendment to these comp plans and not concentrate on infrastructure in existing utilities in urban service areas? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. We have policy in place today um, that addresses trying to have more infrastructure and services Within the urban service area, we have um, some policy within the One Water chapter as well that speaks to increasing utilization of uh, existing infrastructure, of making, of trying to connect folks within the urban service area, septic to sewer. Um, so that is a focus of the comprehensive plan today, um, and you know now we're we're trying to to work on the other policy direction that direct us to minimize the adverse impacts to septic tanks. Um, another question says, I lived in an unincorporated area years ago. The language in this was used to push city sewer and water. How are we assured this is not the final intent? I mean, the I, I hope that everyone will um, take a look at the policies. The changes really are, are focused on the four key areas that um, I mentioned earlier about um, addressing an adverse environmental condition that exists, minimizing the, the concentration of septic tanks, uh, the change to properties that are adjacent, and then the exceptions process. We certainly recognize that um, protecting the rural areas is a priority for Hillsborough County. It's something that is outlined uh, in multiple sections of our comprehensive plan, and our land use section really speaks to the, the one water chapter is uh, about water, wastewater, and utilities, and then the development and the density and intensity are governed by the uh, the future land use section. Our next question is: I think residents of Keystone have a concern that this will allow more density building here in Keystone. Is it is already happening with the Taylor Morrison project on Patterson Road? Can you address this concern? Certainly. So again, I, I can't speak to, to that project, but I can speak to, I would um, point everyone to uh, the policy in the plan that talks about this. Uh, that is for reference 4.3.2A2. And uh, that talks about how extension or connection should not be considered for justification for increases in densities or intensities through the future land use map amendment process. It also states that uh, because utilities are in place, this should not be used as a basis for a rezoning 
to allow uses or lot sizes that would be incompatible with the, the rural area. So our intent is to retain the land use protections for the rural area and um, you know, keep those in place. There is, we certainly have a longstanding commitment to protecting the rural areas in Hillsborough County, and that is reflected on the future land use map as well. This question is related to something that um, I believe it was Sam said earlier um, as he was talking about proven instances of issues. Um, it says you are saying proven. How was the subdivision approved if the permits were not granted? I'm, I'm sorry, I think that might be something we need to send to our email. I just that I don't that's something I'm not familiar with. <laughs> Our next question is in regards to a documented environmental issue. Florida Department of Health regulates septic and Florida Department of Health and Florida Department of Environmental Protection addresses wells. What overriding public interest is determined by the BOCC who don't have the same knowledge as state agencies? So I can just give a, a couple of examples. Um, you know, one might be if there is a library in uh, proposed in the rural area that requires a utility line, that would be something that would probably be in the public interest, the overriding public interest to enable service uh, for residents to have library service, a park, uh, any kind of county facility. Um, again, that, that's really the intent of that policy. We did have a listener interested in, um, as we talked about, the Taylor Morrison development. Um, and we had mentioned that we are not familiar with the um, development in and of itself. They were, uh, they would like to know why we are not familiar with this. Yep, I was not involved. Um, I think that's probably something that is more on the, the land use side of the house. Um, so certainly if you have a question, I'd be happy to, you know, send that to you, but I'm not the best person to answer specifics on that. I focus on water and wastewater specifically within the comp plan. Um, we are currently out of questions. We do have a number of very good um, comments in our comment section. Um, please note Lizzie also put in the comment section in the chat. Um, to, as a reminder, please send all comments to planner at plancom.org by March 11th to be included in public comment um, in the packet. And she also added in the link where you can find the um, plan amendment language um, for uh, your review. Do we have any further questions? Um, we had another question come in that says, is this really your countywide virtual engagement option? So this is our first virtual public meeting. Uh, we wanted to do this to be able to reach the, the broadest members of the community. Um, we are going to be in Keystone on Thursday evening as well. And we are also, um, you know, there's also an opportunity to to send us comments. We make sure that this is, in, we'll make sure that this is included in our next newsletter article on social media. We've been trying to get the word out that way um, as well. And then we also welcome comments at the Planning Commission public hearing as well as the, the Board of County Commissioners public hearing. And I also have someone in the chat asking, what is a vested right? Sure, so that probably needs an attorney to formally define that for me. Um, it's it's kind of a legal term, so I really defer the official definition to the attorneys, but it's essentially if something was uh, in existence or had development rights prior to a certain uh, regulation being enacted, that, that's my understanding of it. But again, I would um, probably need an attorney for a formal um, definition. Lizzie, can you check on the link? I'm seeing some comments about the link. 
Thanks. Yeah. Thanks okay. everyone for letting us know. Um, I'm seeing the chats now come in live. So um, the copy <laughs> of the, the presentation. Uh, so we will post that on our website and we'll follow up with an email with this presentation and also the recording as well. I just reposted the link, so let me know if that doesn't work. It doesn't work, okay. I wonder, Lizzie, if you can direct them to the folder. I wonder if it's some issue with the PDF. Oh, okay. Some people can get it, so that's good news. I'm, I'm seeing another question about Taylor Morrison, and you know this this individual project is really not associated with this amendment, so we're really not going to be able to address Taylor Morrison at this meeting or the in-person meeting on Thursday. I would like to mention, though, in regards to that, you are still very welcome to email planner at plancom.org. Um, and um, because it is a little bit of a, a different relation, um, we are happy to try to get someone on our land use side or someone outside of the agency that is more familiar with it to get you an answer or get you in touch with somebody who's more familiar with it. Thanks. And Bryn, I see a raised hand. Lionel, can we unmute the person with the raised hand, please? Thought I saw it. She's she's right. talking, I, I, but still muted. She, um, yes, she needs to unmute herself. Um. Yeah, Janet, you, you want to speak? Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> I mean, oh. the woman who's speaking is not unmuted. I didn't raise my hand. Um, I was just letting her know that she's still muted. Um, but but while we're waiting for her to get unmuted, I, I would like to say um, there are real life examples um, where there are environmental issues. Ladera, which is right across from Idlewild, is a perfect example, which was around a bunch of lakes, and it was a wellhead protection area. And this is decades ago, and the infrastructure was across the street. Denise Lane and others from Lutz recommended that would be um, a, a good environmental thing to hook up to the water. Um, we also, am I locked up? No, you're fine. Okay. No, we can hear you. Because my my screen is like frozen. Um, the other one is, and I, these are just a couple of examples. You know, when you talk about a special exemption, Strawberry Crest School is outside the urban service area, and they hooked up to that high school in Plant City. Unfortunately, that area is in a uh, floodplain, and there are many businesses there: Burger King, McDonald's, uh, 7-Eleven, and they've used their best efforts with vaulting and septic systems, um, pump outs. But because um, they're in a low-lying area, um, they continue to have E. coli issues, wastewater issues, and they're very close to Strawberry Crest. It, this wasn't do this was uh, documented by the Department of Health uh, many times. So there are, as Sam was saying, these instances where environmentally that makes sense to hook up to an area that's going to continue to have wastewater releases, and we see wastewater releases all the time um, on a much larger scale, closer closer to the coast or after rainfalls. But just to let everyone know, Florida does not have a septic program where you have to have your septic pumped out. Um, we have 200 lakes in this county and a lot of major tributaries. Um, yes, there's a lot of areas in the urban service area that are not being, that do not have urban service areas, 
but the county, I think, is spending $100 million to retrofit old leaky septic tanks that are currently in the urban ser service area. So I think from an environmental standpoint, where it's there's a benefit where it's low-lying surface waters, or like they were saying, you know, there's these special exceptions for uh, or wellhead protection areas or schools or libraries. Um, and there's capacity and the ability uh, to hook up. I think environmentally that that does make sense. So I, I just wanted to make that comment. We had another comment about this Taylor Morrison project and lines that may be put in due to that project. Again, we can talk about, and as we did, as Melissa Dickens explained, uh, under what conditions you can connect to a line, but we can't talk about Taylor Morrison specifically because it's not an, a, a project we worked on. But as she explained, what the conditions have to be under the policies to connect to a line in general. Yeah, and I also just, you know, want to clarify that this amendment is not in place yet. Um, so, you know, if there are concerns about a specific project, it was was not um, because of this amendment or, or as part of this amendment. So I just want to clarify that as well. This amendment has not been approved. It's we're still very much in listening mode um, to hear from the community. So I just want to make sure that folks know that, too. Thanks. And Melissa, just for clarification, one water started, or these discussions started back in 2018, correct? Mm -hmm. There was yes. a lot of discussions before the adoption in 2020. And um, it has recently, you know, been brought back forward for some, you know, uh, some of these modifications. Um, so it's been discussed for, for quite a while, I think. And I think it's great that you're going out to the communities and you're meeting with people um, to talk about um, you know, their concerns. But I, I just wanted, it's not something that started this year. I, I, I've i been, I think our staff has been, and the county and the Department of Health and many stakeholders have been involved for over five years. Um, there's, the woman is back who wanted to speak. Was she able to be unmuted? She did give us a, um, a written comment or a written question, um, but okay. Quickly before I get to that one, we did have another one that came in right before her. Um, uh, are you going to split up meetings by area? I'm in Sefner and rather not truck across town. Anything close to me? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we certainly want to be able to be responsive if people would like us to come out and chat uh, with their individual community. The content probably would be very similar, if not um, almost identical tonight. Uh, you know, this is probably the best place to point people to if they have questions. We're going to record this. This will be posted on the website. Um, so, you know, I would suggest if, if folks are interested in, in having a meeting, we could, um, you know, refer them to, to this presentation if they missed part of it. And then, um, you know, we can talk about how we uh, can best reach other folks who might not have been able to make it or be unable to view the presentation for some reason. Um, can you talk about the size of subdivisions that might be eligible for this? I believe I read 50 plus was the minimum for eligibility. Uh, so for the um, the prevention of septic tank clustering, that would require 20 acres or larger than size within a quarter mile of the urban service area, uh, located within a future land use category that is one dwelling unit per acre or greater density. So that's important. A lot of the rural areas are much lower density, so it wouldn't qualify. And then also located within an A or AE flood zone. Um, and then specifically for the uh, connection to existing lines, uh, there's not specific criteria about what size that would be, um, but that, that it is connected to the uh, existing lines or adjacent, excuse me, adjacent to the existing lines. All right. Um... How can you assure us that these changes are not going to create a large environmental problem for us? Well, I I I feel 
very glad that EPC is here and on board. So that that is one assurance. Um, but um, you know, again, we're not we're not changing land use. We're not changing the density or intensity. Um, and ultimately, the goal of this is to have a, a a stronger environmental benefit. And Janet, I saw your camera come on. I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah, I mean, Ladera was a perfect example of that. The development would have been brought put in anyway, with one house per acre, one house per two acres. You're going to have that anyway. You're just going to have it with septic systems, whatever is allowed there. And in Ladera's case, they ended up reducing density and hooking up to infrastructure, which was great because they were in a wellhead protection area and there were a lot of lakes around them. And I, I live off uh, Lake Venona Sass. It's one of the largest lakes. Um, and there's a lot of pollution in these lakes and a lot of what I would say E. coli bacteria. And that typically people can say it comes from pet waste. Maybe some say from agriculture if it's around, but many times it's leaking septic tanks, you know. So we have a lot of tributaries and stuff, but that Ladera was a perfect example of an environmental benefit. Certainly down here by Strawberry Crest, where the Department of Health, you know, wrote many, many memos documenting that everybody was using best practices, but there was still, because the water table is so low, um, that, uh, it, you know, bacteria was getting into surface water and flowing all the way down the ditches and everything. And um, their recommendation obviously was, you know, obviously to hook up to infrastructure. So that would have been environmentally the soundest thing to do. And those are just two projects. Um, I apologize. I was asked to read the full um, context of the question. So I will go ahead and uh, do that now. Um, speaking of water, the Taylor Morrison project is the biggest impact full project in the Keystone area in history. The BOCC approved the development of 194 homes right on top of the Brooker Creek Preserve and adjacent to many lakes. I live on one of them not one mile away from the project. I have seen our docks on dry ground when Tampa Bay water pulled out too much water. How can you assure us that these changes are not going to create a large environmental problem for us? We remember the water wars of the 80s. Yeah, so I, you know, I can talk generally about uh, the, you know, the one water chapter. There's other provisions that speak to potable water supply, making sure that the connections of uh, the, the the connections between different types of water are protected and considered in any kind of planning. That's really the where the comprehensive plan speaks to anything related to water. It's within the 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 one water chapter. So not everything <laughs> from that chapter is uh, what we're discussing tonight, but there are other policy provisions that speak to that. Um, and then of course, any uh, proposed, uh, um, anything that, that would come forward would go through the, the normal um, plan amendment and development review process. Um, we have a question from when we were discussing when the talks of these things started happening in around 2018 and for a while now. Um, somebody asked, why Keystone? Why was Keystone able to adopt the community plans if these talks were happening prior to 2002? And I'm uh, thinking that the 2002 might be supposed to be 2020. Yeah, I'm hoping maybe someone um on our staff can can look at the when the Keystone Community Plan was adopted, but I my recollection is it was was actually adopted prior. Um, but we, um, you know, again, um, you know, we we worked very hard to get the word out about what we were working on in 2020. We we're certainly continuing to work very hard, and you all attending is uh, very much appreciated because we want to make sure that folks know about it. Um, so. Uh, you know that that was kind of a, a the Keystone Community Plan. I wasn't um, specifically part of that process, so I I I don't know the exact date. Um, I have another question. The Van Dyke project was allowed an additional service connection approved by administrative approval. If a developer can just request an additional hookup, and the county will just grant the request, why the new language? That I'm. I'm not familiar with that specific process uh, and, and that specific case. Uh, so again, that's something we might have to answer offline.
All right, again, I'm seeing quite a bit of comments that we are recording for sure. Um, does anybody have any additional questions at this time? Um, seeing none, I think that might be um, the last of it. Um, you know, again, I just want to close up. Lizzie, can you scroll back to the, the dates and the, the comments screen? Uh, want to make sure that, that folks see these dates. Um, again, I know there's a lot of, of people from Keystone here this evening. We appreciate you coming out. Um, we'll be sharing the similar information when we come out uh, to you all Thursday evening. So appreciate you being here a couple of different times. Um, we uh, will be um, looking at agency comment, looking at comments from uh, the community. So again, if you could please uh, send written comments to planner at plancom.org, that'll be very helpful for us in making sure that we have everything in one place, we can look at it. Um, and we'd like to respectfully request those by March 11th so that we have time as a staff to, to go through them um, and see how we can incorporate them. And with that, I uh, just want to thank everyone for being here this evening and um, you know joining us. We really appreciate your time. We appreciate your comments. I know there were so many, too many that <laughs> we didn't have a chance to read, but um, they are recorded. They're included in the transcript. We will put all of the comments up on the website as well. Um, and uh, we look forward to meeting you all, uh, some of you in Keystone on Thursday. So thanks so much. Have a great evening. <laughs>